All right, in this video, we're just going to go over and go through fully mocking up everything. If you can kind of see, if you paid attention to my last video, axle shaft I had to modify to fix. No thanks from the company. I made bolts. No thanks to the company for the two issues that I main issues I had on this side and on the whole kit. But with those issues fixed, I will fully mock-up assembly this side and we're gonna kinda just go over things for the whole kit so the starters their directions that come with it are okay but could use improvements so from you're supposed to measure I believe from here to here and it's supposed to be a certain spacing back um, I'll put that on the screen and kind of put some pictures on for the directions. They're okay, but not the greatest, but the way he had everything packaged, he was kind of self-explanatory. I'm not going to get into it. I'm still salty about how he handled the two issues I had that I basically had to fix myself even after I spent all that money and he got paid. But that's another discussion, and that's another thing I'm going to have to fight with him about. But getting on with it, we're going to completely mock up this side as well and check the clearance around the axle, which it should be fine. Everything should be good. I just have to install the driver knuckle, upper A-arm, and everything on this side. And we'll go over some structural things that will be happen eventually. Not sure when I'll get to them, but we'll go over some plans. But this side's still mocked up. I'm going to mock up the other side right now and kind of just give a mock-up overview of this whole thing and kind of give you a good I don't know I don't know how to explain it I do have these from Camberg that sort of are already welded in here that these strengthen up the top mount for what they are I will probably will do some more strengthening but that would be a little bit later down the road but I'm going to mock up this side with the shocks just like the other side and then we'll overview that too. So before we move on let's do a quick recap of the issues I have. Number one being the steering which if you look in the left bottom portion of your screen you'll have the bolt that came with the kit that was supposed to work with it. You have on that picture above it is the threaded end that goes into the rack for the stock tie rod end. You can see on the right hand side of your screen the stock tie rod end basically to give you an idea on how it goes in. So what I found out is that the bolt that he gave me that's on the right hand side that's in my hand is an M18 by 1.5 thread. So it's a fine thread metric bolt. The rack that I have has an M16 by 1.5 thread that goes into the rack that's a metric bolt as well. From the research I've done with the part numbers, there is a different rack in the 98 to 2000 era Ranger because of the driveline difference. And then from 2011 to 2001, the later basically Rangers, they had the single overhead cam engine, so their rack was different from what I can gather with part numbers. So I had to basically find a solution to use the clevis and have new bolts hold the clevis onto my rack. So the solutions for solving this problem is either change out the whole rack to the later style and lines to work with the engine configuration I have work which is way too much money to do or 
buy bolts and try and make the clevis fit on my rack with different bolts and that was the most cost effective way to do this the only problem is is when you go to order m16 bolts your selection is very limited so what i ordered were a three bolts that were m16 by 1.5 thread 40 millimeters long and that was all I can get and I think it was about $25 for three of them so it worked out but I had to modify them in order to get it to fit in the clevis and as you can see on the pictures the far left one is an unmodified bolt the middle one is a slightly modified bolt and the right one is the bolt that was sent to me by the kit so from there I had to modify these flange head M16 bolts. I had to grind down the flange head to be able to fit in the recess portion of the clevis and then also grind down the head top of the head so that the heim joint when it's bolted to the clevis will clear the bolt and not rub on it. On top of I had to cut the bolt shorter about 10 to 15 millimeters in order for it to get in the rack and tighten down without bottoming out. So I had to modify these bolts in order to get to them to the work. I had to chamfer the end of each bolt so that I could thread it back into an actual hole. So everything will work as it should with no bindings and it can tighten up as a normal bolt but I just had to crudely make these with a grinder and just trial and error fit, basically, is what happened. Now to recap issue number two is the driver's side axle that goes into the differential. If you look on the picture there, you can see the splines where it goes into the splines of the spider gear that's in the differential. You can see in the groove there where it's cutting it just a little bit the how the grooves were not cut deep enough for this axle this custom axle to go into the differential from where I bought it from by his solution was to get a cutoff wheel and deepen each one of these grooves enough to get it to slide in and I didn't want to do that at first, but being that he wouldn't solve these problems, I did it. And it was very time consuming, and I got it to enough where you basically have to hammer the thing in and hammer it out. It, it'll it work, but you have to hammer it in and hammer it out. So, as you can see there, I got the driver's side axle shaft to work. I don't know how long it will last or how it will break if it does break and I'll cross that bridge when I get to that. Alright we're gonna go over the full mock-up of this front suspension system kinda of just go over a few plans and where I'm heading with the thing. Um, I'm not really gonna do a full like how to install I don't really care enough because this kit I don't think is worth buying for anybody else because I bought it and because I fixed it to make it work I'm gonna use it then send it back and it's a whole ordeal it's completely another train of thought but for right now this is just gonna be we're gonna go over the full mock-up everything is loose on here nothing is tightened down everything has to be removed because the uh, the shock bucket has to be fully welded on. Um, as you can see the driver's side is fully mocked up. Yeah, ABS line, I have to keep this for the uh, Speedo. We got, as I said before, the camber HD mounts for out here. This is pretty much how it's going to look. The coil over here, the bypass shock here. Um, everything is mocked up for the most part. I have parts that came in to hold these the reservoirs. Either this one will be held up by the firewall the tabs will be welded to the firewall. This this is the parking brake cable 
this is going to be pitched along with everything else for the parking brake. There's no going to, there's no parking brake going to be on this thing. Just get in the way. Just don't need it. I got park in the transmission and it's a toy. And also there's other things I'll be putting on it later. So it doesn't even matter. It will have to be removed, but it's either going to be somewhere in this vicinity either on the frame or on the body, maybe on the frame. And then this one will be probably on the frame here or in this spot here, either on the frame or spot here, this reservoir. Same on the other side. Um, I do not have the tie rod in on the one right now because these are not tight right now. So for right now, everything is just loose on here. Um, it cycles, it's functioning right now. The other thing is, is the upper bolts for these to align the uh, camber and caster. Um, this is, so one thing about these upper arms, which is annoying, is I don't know if they welded them up in a jig or not because the further you go out for the adjustment of these himes, the more the arm goes like this. And it's very, very difficult to get these upper arms in. So I'm probably going to need to buy different alignment bolts, upper control arm bolts, just to align this thing. But that's when I have some weight on it or I put the arms at ride height level because there's no weight in the engine in here and everything like that. So one of the other things eventually I will be doing is building a engine cage but that's for way later down the road when the supercharger gets on but for the time being I do need and want to strengthen these coil buckets a little bit more on the frame and then the way I want to do that is just make some quick triangle pieces to either put up here to up here or somewhere like right in here to the frame to try and help with the stress bending of the buckets up here and stress bending. It's more likely just going to be a plate. I have some extra plate from like this is what I mean. These plates, they're, I think, eighth inch thick, or three sixteenths, I don't remember. Um, put some plates to here, just for, as this is, the, the stress is going to be like this, just to help even the stress out on the frame before I get an engine cage, and the other thing is, is like eventually engine cage, this AC system might be moved inside the cab. A lot of things will probably be changed over the years for how this thing gets built, but for time and money and efficiency reasons, just the overall cost analysis, I'm just not going that route right now. And I won't be going full send when this thing gets running and driving to a point. Um, the other thing I really want to try and strengthen up is these because they're mostly hanging over. I'd like to put some plates going back down to here and going back down to here just to strengthen up this top one a bit more. So a lot of this I would like to strengthen up the best I can before I put the engine in. I am still reusing factory brake lines. I'm still reusing a lot of factory stuff just to keep the cost down because to do everything from scratch costs too much and too much time that I just don't have and don't have the money to do that so I'm just not going to do that. Um, the other thing is, is I need to make a front bumper. Also wanting to make a full-blown skid plate. I want to strengthen up the frame horns and if you didn't know this is, hang on, let me go back up here. In here, you got the crush zones. You can see these, these, they're crush zones for when you get into a front end collision, it crushes the frame. That's not going to be good for what I'm going to be doing with this thing. So I'd like to try and 
somehow strengthen up these front frame horns and also between the back lower AR mounts make a uh, cross member just like the factory cross member here for the rack and then integrate it up to a skid plate back down here from here all the way up to the front frame horn here and then integrate a bumper with it. Um, that's going to take some doing to do. I'd really like to do that and try and put as much strength I can into the factory frame without building a engine cage and roll cage yet. This whole cab will stay the same because eventually I want to <clears throat> cut the cab here and build an engine cage and hold everything and more than likely a lot of this stuff will get moved like the ABS module will eventually get deleted these two tanks moved uh, the air box probably is going to be changed even with the supercharger things like that so a lot of things will eventually get changed but for cost analysis right now it's it's stupid for me to just pitch everything just trying to get something running and driving in a feasible amount of time for my set of skills as you see a bunch of parts still laying here like I am going to reuse these factory brake lines there's nothing wrong with them and it, I just don't want to deal with making brake lines so <clears throat> that's the kind of the idea is to make an integrated bumper and skid plate that ties the front frame horns as you can see here the cross zone here into the factory cross member and then make a cross member for the rear one and then I really want to take the two plates or covers for the uh, t torsion bars that were here and build a tube and go down to the cross member that I need to make between the two lower back mounts and kind of triangulate it into the frame back here because this factory frame is boxed from the front the very front all the way to almost the back of the cab I'm gonna say the box of the frame stops right around this area and then it's regular let me see if I can show you kind of like regular C-channel frame it's a regular C-channel frame so sorry if my camera works bad but I'm trying to just kind of make this video before the battery dies because the battery's awful <clears throat> so the thing is this frame is very flexible from like this point like this point back so with the box not on it it's gonna twist a lot and that's where my rear suspension will have like a quote unquote bed cage but it's also gonna be integrated into the frame and some gussets for the frame and the frame's gonna change back there but that's for another video but this is kind of a full mock-up and sort of the plan I got parts coming for the motor. I need to get the motor back up and running in this thing. I need to go through the trans. There's so much more I have to do. So this is like just a kind of mock up. This is where I'm at. I have to right now disassemble everything and weld these completely in, reinforce these, reinforce these, reinforce these, weld them in, reinforce them and get everything situated with the front suspension to where I can put it back on its own weight with the front tires eventually and then put the engine in get the engine situated and put it all back together up here to where it could be at least running and driving to then turn it around and do the back end for the time being and more things in the cab are gonna have to be removed but the cab's just storage right now um, I don't know how else to put this other than this is just a lot of just talking the company that I bought the front kit from still hasn't fixed any of the issues 
that I kind of solved myself that will make it usable and workable. So, again, I would not recommend buying this company parts just for the fact of the sheer customer service is just awful. That's literally the fact of it all. Everything else looks like it's built decently, well made, but customer service for just some issues with different things about this model compared to the later models, it's just ultimately a pain in the royal butt. And I'm not going to get much into it any more than this. But this is pretty much the whole, this is how it sits right now. There's still a lot I have to do and have to figure out. But it's it's a work in progress to not be, I, the ultimate goal of this thing is not be a 10 year project just to get it running and driving to start. If I can get front suspension in it and rear suspension in it and do some other things in about, I'm hoping, two years, I'll be fine with that. But I just wanted to get it to a point where we're running and driving and then build off of. I don't want to have a 10 to 15 year project. So, this is kind of working in progress and works on my off days from work and everything else. So, all these videos are kind of like overviews. They're not really all that great. So, yeah, I, I don't know how to put that. But this is where everything is. This is where everything is. This is how it'll stay. I have to weld everything, but this is just to give some people some context on what's going on and the plans of it all and where I'm at. Alright, before you ramble anymore, let's be done.